No, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, colleagues, uh, wherever uh, you are. Uh, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, and on behalf of uh, FAO's regional office for Asia and the Pacific, uh, and also on behalf of our excellent partner, uh, C4, it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to today's uh, exciting event on youth contribution to innovative forestry for a sustainable future. I mean, we are going to talk about youth proposals for innovative technologies in the forest sector in Asia and uh, Pacific. Uh, in that uh, context, we are indeed privileged to have all of you with us today. Uh, as you might have noticed in recent years, particularly uh, during this World Forestry Congress uh, and its uh, uh, expected deliberations, forests are increasingly being uh, called upon to play an important role in addressing a number of uh, global challenges, uh, be it uh, poverty alleviation, be it uh, food insecurity or climate change, uh, uh, more importantly, in achieving sustainable development goals by a number of uh, uh, member countries. Uh, as shown by the FAO's uh, Asia Pacific Forest Sector Outlook study, there are two prerequisites uh, we identified for uh, the forest sector to play that kind of uh, important or significant role. Number one, we need to continuously uptake and, I mean, promote the uptake and scaling up of innovative technologies. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, innovation and science are key uh, to achieve this kind of increased productivity, profitability, uh, new jobs, uh, and uh, basically making the sector more attractive to uh, the new development challenges. The second prerequisite is involvement, active engagement of youth. So these are the two important uh, prerequisites uh, uh, on, based on which uh, this uh, entire our initiative on uh, youth in uh, innovative technology, innovative forestry technologies is predicated upon. This is particularly relevant to Asia Pacific region because this uh, uh, region is home to 60% of world youth population. Uh, uh, in terms of absolute number, it comes to around 700 million people. So it is not a small number. And really the entire region, a number of countries are uh, looking uh, up to this youth for their uh, contribution, for their active engagement uh, as we move forward. Uh, this is uh, indeed as a, uh, is a very, very important uh, resource for future. Uh, particularly, we are looking forward to tech-savvy youth, as uh, you, many of you have already demonstrated uh, by uh, contributing a number of uh, uh, papers and uh, innovations uh, in forestry. So your role is very pivotal in en enhancing the uptake and sc scaling up of uh, innovative technologies. Uh, you can also be the champions of uh, uh, forward-looking, innovative, and out-of-box thinking, as I already mentioned. So that was the main objective or reason behind uh, FEO and C4 uh, joining hands together, engaging youth, uh, organizing special uh, seminar or workshop on uh, uh, this particular topic, uh, coming out with a, with a specific publication, highlighting some of these contributions, providing a lot of visibility to uh, these uh, excellent contributions being made by you people, uh, uh, youth uh, to this uh, sector. Uh, we are also grateful uh, for your contribution to the roadmap, uh, which uh, we'll be releasing very soon. Uh, on this particular topic that uh, 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 actually demonstrates a number of uh, new developments related to forest technology, which our colleagues will be uh, further elaborating in this uh, side event. So uh, finally, I would like to thank uh, all of you for your valuable uh, contributions, and we look forward to going a little bit deeper at some of the key aspects of these technologies and how they are going to help uh, promote the forest sector in this uh, region. Once again, thank you very much, and I hand over the floor to uh, C4 colleagues, Alexander or Vincent. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, uh, Rao. I I, I want just very briefly to, to explain the, the, the why of, of this event. You know, we, we are with FAO, we uh, worked on the development of a roadmap 
for innovative technologies. And as part of, of the development in the region, in the Asia Pacific region, and as part of the development of this roadmap, we made the call for contribution of, of youth, uh, either students or already working or young researchers or already working in, in the forestry sector and either born or based in the region. And uh, we had a lot of contributions for the best of them, we asked them to develop them. And in fact, uh, the, the initial idea was just to use them for the roadmap, but they were so good and interesting and diverse that finally we decided to make a publication out of it. And uh, it was released last year in the GLF in Glasgow, just before the climate, just during the climate change COP. And, and then we, we, we had the idea, and this is why there is this event here, to use the experience of all these young researchers, student youth involved in the preparation of this publication and the experience of all the youth present here on the site and the experience of distinguished professors engaged in academia and of AFOCO um, capacity building center director to, to think about what can we get out of the experience of, of youth and innovation and, and, and how it is. So this is why after a presentation uh, by James Rochetko, who piloted the whole process, we'll have these two sessions with, with two questions. How can innovative technologies improve and facilitate youth engagement in forestry and forest related issues? Because this is one of the things that was very apparent in many of the contributions is that innovative technologies make things easier for, for youth to interact together, to be interested in forests. To... And the second question is how to better integrate innovative technologies in, in curriculas, because what we see that it, it's very different depending on countries, depending on universities, and, and there are probably op opportunities to, to do more things, including through regional cooperation and, and don't forget that all of that began because of the regional office of FAO in the region and the Asia Pacific Forestry Commission. So the idea is really to make ideas coming out of this room that can be used by uh, decision makers to make progress on, on upscaling innovation and, and the role of youth in this upscaling. Okay, so uh, without further ado, uh, I'll give the floor to James Rochetko, who will uh, briefly uh, uh, present uh, this publication that I encourage you to read. So um, just to begin, what I want to say is that uh, thank you for to Rao and uh, Alexander for a very nice introduction, but I'd also like to say that it's been a great pleasure working with a group of very talented and dynamic youth, both students and young professionals, and it's good to know, uh, it's reassuring to know that they are the uh, forest and forest sector managers of the future. So um, again, this the background was already touched on, but let me just re reiterate, you know, that the third Asia Pacific forest sector outlook study pointed out that the uptake and scaling of innovative technology was a bit slow and uneven, and that it was being a missed opportunity. There was also a call for our youth to be more involved because as for the reasons that Alexander just covered. Um, so in response, FAO and FTA, uh, ICRAFT and uh, C4 and ICRAFT to be specific, implemented the Asia Pacific Roadmap for Innovation Technologies in the forest sector. Um, that the results of the, of the roadmap will be presented on Friday uh, at noon Korean time, if I'm not, if I'm not mis mistaken. And within the roadmap, as was already said, there was a very specific integrated role for the youth. Uh, a quick overlook at that. So we called for contributions in late 2020. Uh, there were 71 submissions. 20 of those were selected for the development of full papers. 
a little bit of, uh, so there were 13 of those developed into full papers, were submitted, peer reviewed, and published in the document that Alexander just mentioned. Total 32 authors from 14 countries. The youth uh, research covered both basic and applied uh, science. And the results and the approaches uh, covered a number of different uh, technology categories, which I'll get into in a minute. And also, they, these, uh, these results and approaches are applicable to a, a range of countries across the region, but also outside the region. Um, the roadmap identified four categories of innovative technologies that were relevant to the poor sector. And the youth papers covered all of these. So digital technologies, biological technologies, process product technologies, finance and innovate, uh, social innovations. The youth papers under the, the concept or under the topic of digital technologies, very much focused on uh, satellite-based technologies for monitoring, reporting, um, uh, forest management. The biological technologies focused on improved genetic resources and germplasm, and also taking those technologies and the material itself and getting it to communities who can make a big contribution by, promote, by producing this material and using it themselves. The process and product technologies uh, focused by the youth um, really looked at harnessing the uh, digital technologies for improved forest planning, management, and monitoring, but also uh, microscopic techniques to look at wood anatomy and also some on engineered wood products, specifically binderless particle board technology. For financial and social innovations, the focus was strongly on community forestry and more specifically on how to empower community forestry user groups. So enterprise development, science, um, citizen science, really how to use ICT technologies to empower that group of very important um, uh, benefactors of, of forestry. So uh, products and events, this has already been mentioned. There's a research volume that was published at the end of last year. All the youth papers were, uh, are cited inside the IT working paper, which is being finalized. It's in the, in the final review. And they, all the papers were presented at the youth event or the, the, the site event for uh, Global Landscape Forum at the Glasgow COP, as was mentioned already. For today, we wanna look at two of the videos on the technologies. We're going to have a panel discussion. Um, we're going to have contributions from the authors and other youth, as well as a, po a polling of the audience, your good selves, as well as a wrap up session to look at uh, where to go from here. A little bit more specific details on the sessions and the panels. Um, so the first, the first session, as already mentioned by Alexander, is looking at how innovative technologies can improve and facilitate engagement of um, youth in the sector. This will be chaired by Dr. Unju Cheong from Kangwon National University. The second session is specifically focused on how to better integrate innovative technologies into forest curriculum. And this will be chaired by Professor Chu Suk Kang from Seoul National University. And then the wrap up session, which is again, focused on the way forward and conclusions. Uh, this will be facilitated by Vincent Gitz of uh, ICRAFT, uh, sorry, of C4 and ICRAFT. Uh, Dr. Cheong will join the panel. Professor Kong will join the panel. We will also have uh, Mr. Rai Young Suzan from AFOCO. So AFOCO uh, is the Asian Forest Cooperation uh, Organization. We will also have another member of the panel will be uh, Yun Sana Biam Ba Suren who is the DG, Director General of the Department of Forest Policy, um, Government of Mongolia. He is also the current chair of the Asia Pacific Forest Commission. The last member of the panel will be Sheila Wurz, who is a senior forestry officer of FAO, uh, Asia Pacific region, and she's the secretary of the Asia Pacific um, Commission. So that's a quick uh, overview and rundown of background as well as the session today. So uh, thank you very much for your attention and let's have a great session. So I think back to Alexander. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, it's online, but 
very nice to see you. Okay, as he introduced me, I'm Unju Chong. Yeah, I welcome all of you here. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. May I start? Okay, I'm gonna start. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, let me introduce myself first. Uh, I'm a professor at the Division of Forest Science at Gangwon National University. And uh, it's my honor to be a moderator in this session. And I'm very much appreciated uh, CIFR allowing me to meet young experts from all abroad and have time to discuss the future of forestry. So yeah, so uh, first of all, we need to see the video, right? Okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to, uh, should I introduce the panels first? Okay, yeah, <laughs> because you know, yeah, it, it was all of a sudden to me. So yeah, first of all, the first session, we're gonna have two questions to the audience, and then uh, we will see a short video from uh, Nepal. Yeah, that Mr. Nobar, yeah, he's going to give us presentation by video. So can he play first? Across the world, the youth are demanding for more inclusive, transparent, and effective rainforest monitoring and management. This is the aspiration of the youth in developing tropical countries where deforestation is widespread. One of the technologies to monitor forests is the satellite technology. Depending on the specification, the satellite can give you images of a daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly period. Given this amazing technology, our paper explores ways to engage youth in tropical forest monitoring. We use three case studies from Malaysia and Indonesia to identify factors key to their successful adoption. Our first case study show how Hakka, organization founded by Aceh Youth, leverages on satellite technology such as Google Earth, Planet, and Global Forest Watch. These platforms allow them to monitor forest changes in near real time and prioritize areas to patrol. This targeted approach is critical considering the 2.6 million hectare of Aceh forest to look after. Secondly, the Hutan Watch platforms demonstrate the use of Global Forest Watch integrated with local information such as permanent reserve forests, totally protected areas, and critical landscapes. The, the Hutan Watch platform promotes forest transparency as many of these data are not usually available for public use. Thirdly, Urun data is an example of how youth, especially the university students, can contribute in data gathering and verification through games. As you can see here, you can swipe left or right if you think the image corresponds to natural primary forest. Your answer can help the Urun data team to verify the satellite images. In the three case studies, we found that the youth are generally familiar and they like to use the technology. To foster their interest, we need to train and build their capacity and create a community of practice. With the right incentive and social media campaign, we can increase the adoption of satellite technology among youth. Technology is not perfect, hence we need to do rapid prototyping so that we can fix problem quickly. Our case studies show that when empowered with the right technology and enabling factors, the youth can be a positive force in monitoring and tackling tropical deforestation. Thank you. Okay. And then, oh uh, yeah, I'm going to introduce our panelists. And we have a uh, two panelists here on site and we have some online. So one from uh, is Nepal, yeah, Lama Sony, yeah. And then a uh, second person in physical here is 
Geo as uh, a motile clearance. Okay, we have him here. And then uh, Sarajin, uh, Sarajinsky Tuan. And then uh, she's from France, maybe online. And then Cecily and from Philippine and Gabriel, uh, Marie, Jessica from Denmark. Uh, and then the last one is uh, June Mandawali. Uh, but he's not online, right? Yeah, I don't think so, yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna give two minutes per each person and they are going to give answers for the questions, how the innovative technologies can be used uh, in forestry. So shall we start, Sony? Okay, Sony, the floor is yours. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, namaste, warm greetings. I'm Sony Lama, working as a biodiversity conservationist in rural and remote Himalayas of Nepal. Do you know that Nepal continues to be at the lead of community-based uh, management practitioners globally? However, the deforestation rate has increased by 25% over the past 20 years. We, the Red Panda Network team, move community forest user groups from seven remote districts of Western Nepal to take the pulse of their forest territories via forest water. Uh, forest water is actually a, a remote sensing application. It's a mobile application that brings satellite derived forest data sets of global forest water, which is actually the remote sensing product into the field to collect near real time tree cover loss, deforestation and fire alerts data. Uh, can you move to the next slide? So yeah, and from uh, 2001 to 2020, the study area lost 4.63 kilo hectares of tree cover. This tree cover loss released 2.74 metric tons of greenhouse gases. From March 2020 to December 2020, uh, 285 verse and 2,983 glass alerts were reported. The tree cover loss was minimal in those districts where there were a higher number of community forest user groups. This highlights the effectiveness of community-based forest management approach uh, or practice uh, that it's protecting the overall forest condition of Nepal. The data received from the forest water application uh, is uh, in real, is, in real time is being sent to the divisional forest offices and the concerned authorities in Nepal so that uh, they can uh, react promptly to the emerging threats. Can we move to the next slide? So, uh, so yeah, the integration of remote sensing technologies like forest watcher into the local forest monitoring efforts bring, uh, brings a considerable computational capacity at just a tap of a finger. And such personal digital assistants uh, have significant potential to enhance community participation uh, in the data collection process, which thus contributes to the successful adoption of community-based forest management practice. And yeah, Forest Watcher has enabled our key stakeholders to visualize and e evaluate forestry-related information in ways that benefit for the decision making process and uh, lastly also uh, it will be very crucial the this innovative technology is very crucial in enhancing the conservation efforts existing conservation efforts as well as devising long term conservation forest plans thank you okay uh, yeah and then can we hear from clarence uh, good afternoon, uh, honorable guests, uh, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'm Clarence, a forestry student and practitioner in uh, Benguet State University in the Philippines, and also, also speaking on behalf of the group uh, Philippine Native Trees uh, Enthusiast. Can you share my uh, slide? Yes, I'm arriving. Uh, perfect. So, uh, okay. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, we all know that there is no uh, perfect uh, system 
even if we want to achieve at the highest level. So way back uh, 2011, uh, the government, the Philippine government established the National Greening Program or NGP that will focus on regreening the country and cover the unproductive and denuded forest lands for production and protect, protection purposes. This is a great program still running until today for 11 years and many practices have been deployed since then. Next slide, please. However, as per the recent assessment, such as the Commission on Audit, the official auditor of the Philippine government, the challenge is that it is revealed that exotic and invasive species of trees were planted by the stakeholders or what we call the people's organizations. And it is more important also to mention the mix of exotic and native species in the program. To avert extinction, we need to grow more uh, native and endemic species of trees, particularly endangered species. So now uh, we need mechanized nurseries, which are focused on the production of these species. Given the present capacity of nurseries around the country, determining the seed sizes that they can hold is critical and which uh, species of trees are suitable. Considering the current capacities of nurseries in the country, evaluating the seed sizes they can also hold significant indetermination of uh, suitable seeds. And to better improve the current system, it is worthwhile to source out native tree seedlings from geotagged mother tree species. So these trees will be tracked and geolocated to have stable seed source for the nurseries in which it could be nurtured and protected by the POs or the stakeholders surrounding the area with the help of local government and the agency. And to further improve the functionality, next slide, please. The functionality and operationality of MMFNs or modernized and mechanized forest nurseries, transparent, complete, proper reporting, monitoring, and evaluation of all the nurseries must be done to ensure the survivability of seedlings. And lastly, aggressive education and information campaigns must be achieved uh, for the stakeholders and other stakeholders to holistically understand the goal and the future directions of MMFNs for conservation, restoration, and consumption of uh, forest products. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. In this session, actually, uh, as the first facilitator introduced, uh, we are dealing with the digital uh, technologies. So uh, the first one uh, presented about the satellite-based uh, image uh, techniques. And second one is uh, she also uses some forest watcher and it's in mobile application. And the third one is he's using geotagging on the mother trees for seed production. And then we are going to have uh, two more presenters, uh, three more, two more presenters from online. So is, Sarazensky is there? Sarazensky or yep. for Gabriel? I'm Dwan, so my name is Dwan Lotus. Sarazensky okay. is more of a family name. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, sorry. Yeah, because I'm sorry. Okay. It's confusing. Yeah. Dwan is your yeah, first Dwan. name? Dwan, yeah, uh, yeah. Dwan is my first name. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Please give us your presentation. Oh, okay. Um, yes, Duane, you should you should answer to the question. Yeah, answer to the questions. Right. How how can innovative technologies improve and facilitate the engagement of youth in forestry and forest related issues? Right. That's a complex question. I'll try to give a, a two minute short answer. Um. So my innovative technologies are many kind of technologies today, right? Mostly based on smartphones. They are the one that use use every day, I think, like uh, social media and maybe application online. And I think the use of smartphone can be really uh, optimized for, for forestry and for use. So I have in mind the development of like a, a library of species of trees, for example, uh, trees that can be uh, in the forest, but also trees that are in the city 
because they used to they mostly live in in an urban uh, landscape and even in the urban landscape today you still have like a lot of trees and uh, a lot of green areas so i think that would be nice um, to develop uh, application or reuse applications where uh, you can engage with uh, the green landscape and with the trees in those landscapes um, as an example i have the tree trees.sg for the singapore um, like a uh, tree tree collection so on, on this website um, that you can access through an app or also through a, a web application you can see all the trees of the city of singapore and each tree has uh, has been uh, like um, put in, a, in this database and you can see the age of the tree you can see the species of tree and you can even get like some knowledge of the use of this tree like can be it can be used for for fruit production or for leaves production or for medicinal uh, purpose. And through this application, the use can really connect with uh, the different species of trees. And this is one example, but uh, I, I know there are others in, uh, in other cities. And so I think for cities in Asia Pacific or in the world, like it would be nice to, to create those application widely. So use can reconnect reconnect with nature because because i feel like there's a huge disconnect of, of use with nature um a lot of use today they, they live in cities and they spend more time on on, on online on the virtual world and so they kind of lose this uh, connection to nature so i think that was my my short uh, idea for uh helping use to protect the forest and connect with nature through innovative technology thank you Okay, thank you for your answer. Actually, he is also young people, so person, so he's very again used to use the uh, handheld, handheld device and then using some webs. So he thinks the database space of the trees and uh, all the me measurement uh, things. Uh, the, the application, the high uh, innovative technologies would be very useful for the uh, forestry. So he may say yes <laughs> for, the, for the answers. And we're gonna hear the other answers from Jessica. Yes. Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. Hi everyone. So to add to Suwan's answer, so in our generation, we are always inquisitive about how technology works. And we always have this drive of trying new technologies in our day-to-day -day lives. These new technologies utilize platforms that are already familiar to us. So for example, we have Google Maps. So they are more attractive to us than paper maps as it is more interactive and it helps us to better visualize things. For me, these technologies could serve as a bridge between the youth and the forestry sector. When you bring in these innovative technologies in the forestry sector, the youth becomes more interested to participate. Secondly, these technologies make engagement easier and can bring more people on board in tackling forest-related issues. For instance, we can all participate in wildlife monitoring by reporting through our smartphones any sightings of endangered wildlife or illegal activities around us. Thus, incorporating forest-related issues with innovative technologies will allow us to engage and be part of the solution. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. She also agreed to the uh, use of innovative technologies which facilitate the forestry and engagement of the social uh, people. So, uh, and thank you for your opinion. And then, uh, so I'm gonna pull, actually we have two questions in this session. First one is, do you think that innovative technologies can attract use to forestry? And the second one is, Digital technologies uh, and the ease of you uh, with use, use use them and are often presented as a key means to facilitate the engagement of social society and society as a whole with forest related issues. So, if you agree with this question, then you can uh, answer to yes. So, 
uh, I'm going to do a poll. Uh, uh, with sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, excuse <laughs> me if I interrupt you. I think we have at least two other young uh, um, uh, scientists that would like to reply to your first question. First question. Uh, Yes, mm -hmm. uh, we have Noor. Noor, are you online? Are you still with us? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, oh, Noor, she presented. Yes. I didn't know. I, 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 can, I can just give very uh, like brief uh, uh, feedback from myself. So in my experience, such technology uh, could help facilitate the youth engagement because this technology can help create a level playing field or at least an entry point for the youth to get involved in the uh, management of the forest. So as we might be aware of many youth uh, lack the access, the network or the resources to critical data and information regarding um, forest status, uh, forest ownership, land use, land ownership. And these are, these are important for the management of forests. And unfortunately for now, I think in, in many countries, these data are scattered all across the different channel and they're not easily, uh, is easily available. So we need this access of data and information to allow for more inclusive, transparent and participatory forest management. So as the case study of Hutan Watch platform shows, um, the availability of this data on an online platform can help uh, the youth to participate and take action um, in a, a more inclusive forest management. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So do we have one more answer or? Yes, I, I think we, we were expecting June Mandawali, but she just oh. sent an apologies uh, because her connection is too bad. And oh, so, uh, so as I understand, uh, since Clarence and Sony have made their presentation, maybe we, we right. move them to session 02 for the answer. So we can go to the polling if you want, as you have announced. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, so I will put online the polling. There's mm -hmm. the instructions on how to join. You need to use Slido. So um, it's fairly easy. I'm going to show this now on my screen. Um, okay. This is the, you go with your mobile phone or with your computer, you join slido.com and you enter this code, which is WFC youth. And, or you can scan this QR code with your mobile phone and then click on the link and it will bring you to the polling. And, so we can start. Uh, okay, then can yes. We see the questions one yes. by one. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Here, yeah, we have one question. The first question here, and do you think the innovative technologies can attract use to forest? Oh, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, how many people put there? Okay, so. Because we have a lot of Korean students here, so I can translate a little bit. Yeah. So, 저기 이 in 어 혁신 기술이 어 여러 여러 젊은이들을 이어 임업으로 끌어들일 수 있을 것인가에 대해서 yes 또는 or no를 해주시면 되고요. Okay. Oh, somebody say no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> pull back. <laughs> okay. They're embarrassed. <laughs> oh, back. The no is back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that this poll that has been quite been uh, an, um, an obvious uh, re reply. So we can move to the second question. The second question, yes. Yes, I can hide the okay. results for a moment. The question is that one. So, 이런 것들이 이제 어이 사회나 다른 사람들을 더이어 임업에 관련된 그런 이슈들에 관심을 갖게 할수 있는 그런 키어 기술이 될 것인가? 예, 에 대해서 물어보고 있습니다. I am hiding the results for a moment <laughs> okay. so that so that we don't influence uh, no. the people when they vote sorry it was an error in on my part on the previous poll 
Okay, I think we have more than 30 replies, so we can start showing the results. There you go. A bit Hello? less, a bit less um, on the yes, some some no's. Yeah, we have this is interesting. Yeah, it is. So do we have to hear from the no's? Why they choose no? Would be interesting, yes, if you yeah. can hear from someone. Oh, you said no. Yes. Okay, yeah. Because I think there are uh, mm. sometimes we need to communicate the problems to the social society in a different ways. Okay. So okay. technology is not all the solution. We oh, need to I see. Include other other aspects. Oh, I other see. Aspects. Yeah, here's a very good uh, point. Actually, but you know, it could be a uh, one tool, right? Attract them with the or uh, showing the data, and this technology can be used. Oh, for the uh, showing how the forest is deforestated, something like that. So we can attract them and then we can communicate in different ways, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, we need to do uh, many ways. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your opinion. And is anybody vote for no <laughs> here? And anybody can explain why you choose no? Oh yeah. Both, but I would like to hear. I think the reason is that. Can you hear? Can you hear us? A very low. Is there a microphone in the room that they can use, or Hello, they can come to the vote. podium? Yeah, I didn't vote, but I think the reason why there are no answers is because the people experiencing forest-related issues are local communities, which in the first place do not have the infrastructure oh. and the access to the technology. Some of them do not even have internet. Mm -hmm. So. Um, if we really want to spur change, then we have to make sure that the local communities themselves have the means, have the tools, and not just the people outside the community. So, of course, us in the urban areas, of course, we can assist them and so on, but we have to go the extra step to reach uh, out to them. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Very good point. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was my concern because, you know, we... Uh, all of forests are very remote places and they don't have any intra, uh, in infrastructures and sometimes they don't have electric. So it could be a problem and it, uh, maybe urban people, they like it, but the local people, they don't know about it. So she has a very good point. Thank you. Thank you for your opinion. And then, okay, then we close. We, the have, we have two people online that would like to speak. Online? The first one is James. James, you want to? Yeah, just real quick. I mean, I voted yes, but um, <laughs> I think there's a generational <laughs> issue as well. So it's yeah. it's not just you, right? But um, older people like myself, if uh, they might not find it as easy. So that's you know sort of a, a an additional point to the previous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and we also have Sharuk that would like to speak. Please. Mm -hmm. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Um, I agree with the, uh, our female colleague. Um, it is not easy for everyone to use the innovative technologies. As uh, we can see, we have our first order innovations like laptops, but second order innovations are not accessible everywhere. And uh, another point is uh, integrating innovative technologies do also demand uh, a change in teaching style as well. And not all professors who are old enough, they are not uh, easily adaptable to new technologies and that create a problem as well. Thank you. Thank you. He has the same opinion with her, I guess. Okay. And do we have more opinion um, from online? Uh, I don't see anybody online raising their hand anymore. So I think this is good now. Okay, thank you. Thank you for all attending this session and then uh, good opinions. And I hope you all are familiar to the innovative technology, but we need to uh, more focus on the forestry than the innovative technologies, I guess. Okay, and then I'm gonna wrap up this session and I'll give the floor to Professor Kang for the next session, okay? 
Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Kyu Sakang from Seoul National University. Now it's the session two. This is very, very, very interesting and nice session. Um, the title or the question of the session two is the how to better integrate the you know, innovative technologies in forest curricula, which means the education systems. As I understand, we have two presentations and seven panels. So among the seven, we have two on site here and five uh, online, I guess. So first we'll have some presentation. Uh, Kamran, is he ready? Yes, Sharuk Kamran, I will run his video. Okay. And then I think the presentation that was scheduled after uh, Sharuk has already been made in session one. So we can skip that. Okay. Okay, yes. So I will run the video. Yeah. Good. Good day, everyone. My name is Sharuk Kamran. And do you know that drone technology can airlift sweep nets for insect monitoring? As insect populations decline around the world, that also threatens prey availability for species like bats and swallows. Therefore, this study, this pilot study conducted together with another study on the coexistence of such flying insectivores, which requires better insect monitoring methods at different heights. There are many existing insect trapping methods, but they do not have the potential to monitor dynamically. Clearly, the aim of this study is twofold. Firstly, to prepare drones and nets as an alternative to conventional sweep nets over large areas. Secondly, to test their effectiveness. I believe such a usage of drones is still largely not in use in many developing countries. This study conducted in northeastern Germany, where we use three different treatments, a conventional mali strap and two innovative drone net designs with a single hanging and two fixed nets for six different heights covering four types of habitats. Now shedding some light on few results. This graph here is a summary of insects caught at six different heights. Note that most insects caught by the mully strap at a height of one meter is due to its large area, large surface area and being close to the ground. On the other hand, the insects caught with drones get decreased gradually. So in conclusion, only a very few specialized Insects can fly at higher altitudes. The second graph summarizes flying insect orders across all sampling sites, where true flies were the most frequently caught, followed by thips was, and wasps. Among the least encountered were the butterflies and the lace wings. In conclusion, Mali strap caught seven taxonomic orders, while each type of drone caught five taxonomic orders. In fact, it was hard to compare the results directly due to different net designs. To summarize now, it revealed that hobby drones equipped with homemade special nets can be used for dynamic insect sampling, but only at lower altitudes, up to 20 meters, due to their limited performance at higher altitudes. This study also paved the way for future studies to consider the potential of drones to follow mid-flight hunt, mid hunting behavior of such flying insectivores and to work further on range of factors influencing their effectiveness. This method is not only limited to crops, but it can also be applied on tree canopies and other aquatic areas. I am sure that this technology gives us hope to get a proper understanding in real time, especially if it becomes affordable for farmers, ecologists and entomologists. However, I also believe it will be challenging to apply the method especially in areas where there is no proper legal policy and less human resources operating the drones itself and that's it thank you very much everyone okay thank you very much he's trying to apply the drone technique in the entomology and maybe also some other scientific research or education maybe you can use many different purposes okay and then we have, which one goes first, online or on-site? I think the idea is to go first online, since in the I session before we had first the on-site. We have five. The Q hall. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Yep. So for my question about 
on how to better integrate innovative technologies in forestry curriculum. So I focus not only for the educational aspect, but more widely I was thinking about the uh, important application of innovative technologies in the forestry sector. So I'd like to emphasize the importance of scale consideration for integrating innovative technologies in the forestry sector. Uh, scale consideration meaning that wide range of scales from the large to small and even micro scales uh, need to be integrated at the same time when projects are planned or educational programs are planned and conducted in the forestry. Uh, large scale of technologies promise quantitative achievement and give overall information of the globe. For example, analyzing satellite data can show us the important changes and tendencies in the forest, uh, specifically under this crucial climate crisis, which the world's monitoring and acts are mandatory. Uh, however, it may miss the details and may not be enough for case-specific information. On the other hand, small-scale technologies are able to generate qualitative achievement, the information of a specific, specific site, uh, site of the project, or individual trees. So those are also necessary to make projects effective and successful. So it will promise uh, removal of failures, and that is again an important factor for quantitative achievement in the group. So in conclusion, uh, quantitative achievement is crucial for the global initiatives, which can be supported with a wide scale of technologies. And at the same time, to support effective and successful project, quality consideration should be included with a small scale of technologies. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he's talking about some scale or the, uh, the project could be the concern. Yeah. And then the second is Anga Saputra from Indonesia. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Yes, I'm ready, sir. Okay, uh, thank you for the forum. My name is Anga Saputra from Indonesia. So uh, in my opinion, there are many ways to integrate innovative technology into forestry curricula. The first, uh, we can identify uh, uh, the course because every course, every course there, uh, they have a uh, background standard and the purpose to achieve uh, something. So innovative technology must present as a problem solving uh, in the course. And the second, we can imply the innovative technologies in a specific course. This means that we have no need to create a new course only for the technology uh, to the student. Uh, in my previous study, I'm a conservation and ecotourism. We learned about wildlife animal inventory and also ecotourism so uh, those course are the example for implying the technology overall in my mind was uh, drone technology because we can use it for uh, wildlife inventory and also uh, we can find the hazard view or spot point before the ecotourism is created and the third we can combine with the student central center learning uh, just let the student uh, take and discuss about the topic and then make a project and about the innovative technology because uh, basically technology always grow up per day month and also year so we can limit the creativity of students and i think enough for me thank you okay thank you and one of the his point is that please do not dis disappointed even if you don't if you are not familiar with innovative technologies Okay, and then third one is uh, Sania, Sania Rai Tamang from Nepal. I'm unfortunately, sorry. Unfortunately, uh, Sanjay is not with us. Uh, okay. He was unable to join us. So we can okay, move to Daisy. Daisy Lamatia from Indonesia. Yeah, I'm here. Ready to make questions? Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for this opportunity. Uh, no, no answer so much for the for the statement, but I think when we talk about young young generation, when we talk about teenager, I think, uh, and then we talk about innovation, we can we can make the relate about the rewards or competition for make it the innovation. Can 
as, as kids, I am as a young generation know that if the young generation have an ambition, so that's why uh, we can make uh, some competition, some innovation to make a sustainable forestry programs. Because I think uh, uh, kids that young generation have ambitions uh, that the, that have uh, relate for that. Just that. Thank you. Okay. If I understand clearly, then maybe you can make some competition games or so. So try to give student some incentive, something like that. Okay. Then the next one is uh, uh, Shahrukh Kamran from Pakistan. Are you there? Um, okay. okay I'll yeah. just, uh, give a short point um, here. Um, but I believe uh, such curriculums do already exist. Uh, I already personally experienced two examples like that. Um, what we need now is um, to focus more on open softwares. Or, which are uh, which may be available to uh, all people in remote areas as well. First, if we can provide technology and internet and everything over there. Second thing, uh, a cooperation is required between the partner countries because as the uh, process is slow, maybe what we cannot invent, maybe we can adapt. And for that, uh, partner countries should uh, explain their policies regarding transfer of technologies and uh, uh, scientific research. And uh, um, I think this type of platform we need to invent that we will not going to only focus on universities, but at level of vocational training and open universities. So everyone can get access to that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's very, it's very important to make some training and um, also we need to, to be familiar with these technologies. And then now we have two panels on site. So maybe Kalanes. Yeah, now you, okay, yeah. Already you did? Yeah, okay. And then Sony, okay. Do you have a more opinion or? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So all uh, our colleagues have answered uh, the question, and I think I have to add one more thing is about uh, strengthening the community extension uh, for students and not only uh, specializing specializing in this field, but also in the forestry uh, curriculum in uh, general, so that uh, the students in the future can develop a sustainable, uh, empathy-driven, and uh, legal legal solutions for conservation and restoration in the next three to five years, since uh, all of this, all of the innovative technologies, all of the technicalities are all in line and included in the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. So we have until eight years to uh, maximize everything. And it's important that uh, we can address uh, forest-related uh, problems and issues by uh, strengthening you know, immersion to students in the whole of uh, the Forestry Academy. Thank you very much. OK, thank you. And you have a very long, nice plan. Okay, and then last, Tony, yep, your turn. You have some presentation? No, just okay. Uh, thank you for giving me op giving me this opportunity to talk. So uh, the recent technological breakthroughs in remote sensing have allowed us uh, to allow have allowed qualitative leap to uh, better understand the forest ecosystem and management. And from collecting uh, basic improved forest data to combating illegal logging or associated trade, 
innovative technologies uh, plays a critical role in sustainable management of forests. And answering this question, how do we better integrate the innovative technology in forestry sector? Then uh, I'll give two examples. So first, uh, youth uh, integrating, uh, youth are uh, indispensable, uh, but underutilized forests in tackling global uh, inequality and poverty. But if we integrate uh, or if we facilitate the engagement of youth in uh, innovative technologies will better uh, improve the forest condition. So, uh, and, the, uh, and the live example I want to show you is that it's, it's obvious that young generation, we use digital platforms and smart app more often, but uh, the older generation may lack interest or skills to do so. So maybe uh, 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 participation of youth is more important. And then the other uh, example is the community forest uh, people, because the forest, uh, those communities will live, uh, those community will live adjacent to the forest should be given uh, more priority for, for this. So, uh, so as uh, I presented earlier, uh, we mobilized 68 community forest user groups from seven remote districts of Western Nepal. It was very hard for our team, the Red Panda Network team to, uh, to train them, but with a lot of hard work and series of training, we were finally able to do so. We were finally able to uh, train them well to uh, to tease that the, the mobile application. So we should integrate those community people who live adjacent to the forest and as well as the youth. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Now, so we are, we catch up the time schedule and, and student and young professional, you, know, you are our future and I wish you to actively involved in this uh, roadmap making. So, and then now we have two polls with you. So maybe also you are leading internet poll. Yes, I'm going to put on the polls. Give me a yep. second, I'm going to share my screen. Yep. And the first question is, do you think that innovative technology are well covered in forestry curricula? Please visit this Q code and try to your answer. To access Slido, it's the same as before. Yeah. So same website, same code. You can also scan the QR code. We're In the getting... session one, you have some pre presentation from the those who are answered no, but this time maybe I ask you someone who make yes. If you have okay. any opinion, then please raise your hand. Yes, we can start showing the results as we're getting some questions. Okay. Oh yeah. Seven, seven, two, three. <laughs> Who answers yes, maybe one or two. <laughs> okay. okay. And so then, we have a clear result here. Yep. Now finish then. So we on go the floor, to this. anyone want to give your opinion after this result? Yes, please. Please introduce yourself and then give your opinion. Yep. Afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jessica. I'm from Zimbabwe. Yes. Well, uh, I would like to give my opinion. As I was listening to this conversation, I was just hearing about technology, which include uh, mobile application, drones, or what. But I also believe that technology is not just about uh, mobile application. We do have other technology which we invented long before, such as agroforestry. It's a method of technology. We need to train our youth on how to utilize our forest. Information dissemination is very important. We can, as you see that uh, poverty is happening and uh, there is now food insecurity and uh, people are now clearing our forest to farm. So how about if we teach our youths 
on how to teach their communities on to uh, sustainable forest utilization where they can utilize the forest and planting at the same time whilst uh, conserving the forest using climate smart agriculture uh, practices. I think uh, technology is just not about uh, uh, softwares application, it's about what uh, innovation we can do to preserve uh, our forest. We can have this um, initiative where we can, uh, in my country we have what we call tree planting day, where everyone is supposed to plant a tree. So if we do that, we increase our forest number of our forests in our region. So I believe um, we should impact our youths on how to use uh, our forests sustainably, especially integrating agriculture and forest at the same time without this uh, deforestation. I think that's my opinion. Oh, thank you very much. Very good opinion. One more opinion. Okay, yeah, please, behind. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Yanku Sangma from India. Okay. So uh, when we talk of uh, uh, technologies, I think we should also uh, not forget our ancient arts and craft. We must also include them in the technologies and in the curriculum because uh, a lot of youth uh, nowadays don't know the art, simple art uh, of pest management. I'll just say, for example, in my uh, area, we have, we always had this traditional practice of, you know, simply catching a crab, uh, breaking it open and letting it rot in the sun. After that, we tie it to a pole and uh, stake it on the paddy field. All the pests come to this crab. And then after a few, uh, say half an hour, we simply burn all the pests. So we, uh, but these crafts, these ideas are not being taught to the youth. And uh, the youth today don't know anything about these. So I think we should also do something to preserve these ideas from our uh, ancestors. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. One more? Okay, yes, please. I think the opinion from Flo is very important. Okay, yeah. A very good afternoon to you all. I am Sunit Bharadwaj. Uh, I am from the Ministry of Envi Environment, Forest and Climate Change Government of India. Uh, I completely agree with the, what the representative from Zimbabwe and India has rightly said. Uh, that technology, when we say it should not be regarding information uh, uh, dissemination only it it should be basically how we can improve uh, the health of our forests how we can improve our agriculture so we need to focus on innovative technologies in these areas plus uh, one more thing which i would like to emphasize is uh, environment and forest they are basically our life so we should have life uh, a short form for life for environment and forest like we need to have our lifestyle which suits environment, which, which we need to have save energy, we need to save water. So apart from innovative technologies and in improve, improving the forest and environment, we should also focus on in, innovative technologies in improving our lifestyle so that we can coexist with environment also. That's all I have to say. Okay, Thank you. Uh, that's a very good opinion. Uh, okay, very short, <laughs> please. Yeah. I think all the technologies have been uh, discussed, but I think uh, when it comes to youth and technologies, I think one uh, significant aspect is about financing technology. Uh, we all know that youth organizations or some youth groups are very informal in nature, so there's no uh, formal engagement. So uh, what we wish to governments, to some uh, large scale corporations, if they have some civil uh, some CSR, corporate social responsibility, or let's say the GF, the GCF, the uh, the green funds. So we want to know if these uh, some of these funds can go directly to the youth who are working their uh, jobs or to incentivize their initiatives because it's very hard that uh, if some youth organizations or youth clubs that organize, for example, a large tree planting event or a monitoring event, it's very very hard if you don't have any fund. Let's be straight to the let's be uh, straight to the point. So, uh, we wish that governments can allocate like. They receive millions and billions from uh, different funding institutions when it comes to green funding. So we wish them to allocate some for the youth that it goes directly 
to the youth, not only to with the third party systems. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And then also we will have some chance for final discussion. So please make some your comment in the later. Yeah. And then you have the second poll. Uh, sorry, uh, I think there's one uh, panelist online who would like to intervene. Okay. Uh, James, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, real quick, I, I just like to point something out from the colleague from India and Korea that uh, from the roadmap study, actually this, this concept of integrating the innovative technologies with uh, indigenous, in, indigenous knowledge, uh, traditional practices was pointed out and that's that's identified in the roadmap study. So just uh, kudos to both of you for mentioning similar topics. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And yep. And then the second poll. Um, now question is what should be done to improve the integration of innovative technologies in forestry curricula? You can make multiple choices. One, two, three, four, five. First is to modify the curricula, and second is the link with other academic, academic sectors. The third one is increase links with the private sector. The fourth is to facilitate exchanges between forestry teaching institutions. And then fine, the last one is to increase investment in forestry teaching institute. As usual, the website is always the same. The code is always the same. So if you had loaded this on your mobile phone, it should still be there. We're giving them another few seconds. I can see the quest the answers are coming in. So I'm going to show the results now, and then you can keep on voting. In my opinion, all should be done, but we needed to make some priority, but I don't know. <laughs> okay, it seems that the answers have stabilized. So you have the, the first one is increased investments. In okay, the, first, the high number is the increased investment in forestry teaching institute. Okay. Hmm. As always, the problem is the money and front. <laughs> okay. And which one is the lowest? Multiply the curricula. Yeah. Oh, there's one lower. It's a yes. professor's duty. So maybe from the student or young scientist, there could be lowest. But I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, then it's done. Okay, so now you know the, our result. And in my opinion, the innovative technology is already with us and all kinds of things like camera or this kind of internet connections or mobile or notebook. They're already innovative technology. But the, the problem is that how to integrate, how to apply in our forestry sectors. So maybe we can have some very good discussion after the session. So uh, this is the end of the session two. Then after that, maybe the moderator, you are organizing the final discussions and make the way forward. So thank you so much for joining the session two. Okay, thank you very much. Vincent is back or yeah. I'm, I, am, yeah I just wanted to ask uh, also the organizers whether we, we finish on time or not because we are running late. Uh, perhaps No, we are, we are on time. We have 15 more minutes.
No, no, we, we, we're running late on our, on our original program. We wanted to have, but it's okay. We still we still can have the ambition to finish on time. So uh, to wrap up this uh, uh, this session, we have a, a distinguished panel. We don't have a, a panel to invite the speaker. So I don't know if you would like to come to here. Uh, maybe that's that's more 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 convenient. And uh, we'll we'll start with Dr. Eun Jung Sheon from Kanwon National University. Uh, please. Okay, I'm back again. And then, uh, okay, I was very happy. I'm very happy because you know I I've been attending a lot of conferences, but I do not see these these young people's attending the meetings and they are uh, giving uh, their opinions. And then, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm very happy and I see our forestry, uh, the future of the forestry is very bright because you are engaged, you, you are already engaging in the forestry. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, and then first of all, when I, uh, invited to be a chair of this session and I see the title of this conference and it is very interesting uh, because you know uh, and then it is very pivotal because we are entered in full IR era in an old country and then uh, but especially the Asia Pacific uh, regions they have a young uh, good major population uh, of the young people but in case of Korea, we are very, uh, we are mostly uh, aged people in the forestry sector. So we are, we have the uh, same goal, so integration of the innovative technology into the forestry, but we are very in different circumstances. So, but the goal is to introduce youth into the forestry. Uh, and for, for that goal, uh, we are doing well, I guess, because we already teach uh, many things to the student and then all the young generations, they are familiar with using uh, these innovative technologies. But, uh, but today I got a good answer from uh, Jessica from Zimbabwe and the other uh, person, uh, the other people, because they pointed out that integration will be uh, natural, I guess, because we are on that era, but we need to focus on the forestry itself because, you know, uh, people are concerning the deforestation because, and they want to save the earth, uh, uh, preventing deforestation, but they do not concern the life of the local people in forestry. So, uh, but you know the local people they cannot sacrifice their life for the the other people in the earth. So we are always focused on the forestry itself first, and then uh, to make them boom, uh, we need to integrate the innovative technologies. So uh, I like their view, your view, and your opinions for that. So uh, today I it's very fruitful uh, conference for me and uh, for you all, because my students are here and I hope they get, uh, they take this message for home. So, and I'm very happy to be with all you guys here. Thank you. Thank you, Eunju, uh, and, 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 and now, uh, um, Dr. K Dr. Professor Kang, please, yeah. Ah, Fabio, we, 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 we would like to see your cat or, or, or perhaps we, you could put the, the room, uh, the on-site room or, or the speaker uh, showing up, for, especially for the online audience. In the main, do you hear Fabio? <laughs> Hello. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Okay, as I said, today is a very nice discussion. And I have the same feeling as Professor Jung. 
and our future is very bright and I hope you are going very well. And today we just talk about some remote sensing or drones, but uh, the innovative technology is not only these small things. Uh, at the beginning already we had some presentation. So there are many different types of technology like digital technology, biological technology or produce and product technologies and some other innovation of finance or social. So I think we just have the first step on first steps. We are just beginning. And then also in my experience, for example, in Korea, the innovative technology in especially forestry sector is just beginning, it's just start. So, but also this technique is quite going very slow. And this very there large variation between the community or between the organizations. Um, so, but and also maybe this uh, innovative technology could be related to some robotics or some three D printing, something else. So we are going to very long way to go. But by applying this innovative technologies to our forestry sector. I think we should aim to develop or advance forestry by realizing smart forestry. We either like to make some smart and managing safe forest resources and providing efficient forest service. And if you examine the possibility of this application of innovative technologies, and also this seems going very, very gradually. And, but it could be start in the disaster or some pest management. For example, in Korea, we are applying this kind of drones of high technology for protecting forest fires or insect management. So it could be applied for this kind of things. But, and for doing this, I think also we need to communicate each other and collaborate. And also we should make some practice and training. And also we have to give the young scientists some incentive to attract our technologies. And also as we discussed in session two, all technique should be going a little unexpected way, some cost effective ways. So for the, some other developing countries, maybe this funding or the cost could be problem. So maybe um, trying to make efficient way and cost effective ways. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Ken. And, and now to the floor, Su Su Suzin Ryang from AFOCO. You have some final perspectives as well. Uh, thank you very much and good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, very much inspi inspirational session. Uh, already two professors gave us uh, very good remarks uh, for your presentations. I'd like to highlight one thing and I'd like to introduce our one uh, program of AFOCO. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I'm Sujin uh, of uh, from Asian Forest Cooperation Organization, shortly we can say AFOCO. We serve, we are serving 16 member countries in Asia and still we are welcoming more countries. So from our region, we received the various innovative presentations and really, really appreciate it. Um, especially, I'd like to highlight one thing that innovation is not just a tool, uh, it should be a philosophy and it should be uh, our mindset, how to move our future, uh, we, we need to pursue. So these kind of uh, perspectives and uh, um, ideas uh, that was coming from our uh, young fellows and foresters really, really inspired me to think over our further programs and educational training sessions uh, serving for our vision. Um, let me introduce uh, AFOCO, uh, especially uh, my division. I'm from Capacity Development Division. We have a regional educational and training center in Myanmar. 
And uh, every, every year, we are having various types of uh, trainings. And also, uh, we are providing some educational programs uh, to the young foresters. So please come and visit and I hope, hope to receive all of you. Uh, we also have a, a experimental forest in the center. And the reason, main reason we are developing this kind of a forest is that we have a continuous voice from our member countries that we need uh, somehow the long-term research-based uh, policy enhancement. We need somehow the governance enhancement, but those parts will not be happen without the evidence-based um, solutions and ideas. So this is why you are here, you are studying, and you are uh, working for forestry sector. And uh, this kind of action-oriented, science-based, uh, inclusive, innovative approaches will help us to cooperate and communicate all together. Uh, I believe that uh, this, and also I'd like to, uh, I, I hear one thing that somehow the we, young foresters uh, put a poll that you need some more financial support. So we also have a scholarship program. Uh, we are having uh, the landmark program scholarship program so that we hope to receive all of you and getting experience in our forest uh, working for the Asian region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Suzine. And FOCO is also a, a young but very dynamic organization in, 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 the, in the landscape in the region. So, uh, and to, con to conclude, so very important um, mandate and, and role to play ahead on, on these issues. Uh, and today we are delighted to have the, uh, the presence with us of uh, the Director General of the Department of Forest Policy and, and Coordination of the Government of, of Mongolia and, and Chair of the Asia-Pacific Forestry Commission, uh, Oyun Sana Biamba Sweden. So welcome you to the floor for your remarks. Thank you, dear colleagues. Friends, it's great to see you all in person, also those who are participating in online. Uh, let me share a few personal thoughts at the end of this very rich and interesting event. Uh, first, we can proud of you, our youth. The high quality of their work as well as their innovative perspective paved the way for sustainable uh, future in the forest sector in our region and uh, gives us uh, hope to despite the multiple challenges we face these days. Uh, second, the countries could take advantage of this youth publication to further encourage and strengthen the involvement of youth sustainable forest management in the region. We could encourage excellency and use FAO and Asia Pacific forestry co uh, uh, networks to facilitate exchange and showcase at the regional level. Selected youth contributions and in initiatives with the highest potential impact uh, to complement the work already have done. Further calls for youth contribution could be organized with the support of C4 and other partners focusing either on specific issues, on specific innovative technologies, or in specific sub-regions in our ecosystems. The publication presented today would thus become the first step of serious aim at, at the strengthening knowledge, sharing exchange of experiencing and technology transfer and creating a strong community of students and young experts around innovation and sustainable forestry. Third, the innovative technologies can be only contribute to make the forest sector more attractive for youth facilitate citizen engagement in forest monitoring and sustainable forest management. They create new uses for wood products and new opportunities for forest dependent people in, in the communities. But they can also uh, revolutionize for forest management and governance. Hence, we need only to improve integration of innovative technologies in forestry education curricula 
as highlighted during this event, but also to adapt our political and legal frameworks, frameworks at the regional and national level to realize potential of innovative technologies for sustainable forest management. Improving drone regulation, as noted, uh, Sharo Kamran is one of examples the work to be done. The countries in the region can play a critical role in that regard to design innovative policies for sustainable forestry. As the current uh, chair of the Asia Pacific Forestry Commission, I stand ready to help. I personally, uh, I was 2004, a little bit shy, and then as a student, uh, trying to be a member of the International Forestry Student Association that time, and we have contacted. And uh, after that, we uh, created or established the Forestry, uh, Inter uh, Mongolian Forestry Student Association that time. It's about uh, four, uh, 20 years ago. And now they are very actively working in the nation. Uh, so there is you know, kind of the mechanism or uh, the cooperative ways the young people could uh, work together, and especially in the room, in this room, and also online, those who are really you know, having uh, experience or feeling in the forestry, some are studying in the forestry, some are really want or being together with the forestry sector, and these are the, the generation in the future, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Director General, and for also giving us the uh, the image of, of, of what the trajectory, uh, can, your personal trajectory and, and thinking can lead to. Um, and, and last but not least, uh, also uh, Rao Mata online from the FAO Regional Office of Asia in the Pacific in Bangkok. Rao, some, do you hear us? You need to unmute, Rao. Okay. And well, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, please, the floor is yeah. yours. No, excellent. Uh, thank you very much once again, uh, colleagues. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, yeah, uh, I fully concur with uh, all the uh, panelists as well as chairs of various sessions and all. We have had an excellent uh, event today. Uh, we had many inspiring examples of technologies, interesting experiences, and innovations. And as uh, uh, one of the uh, panel chair mentioned, uh, today is just a showcasing of a few technologies related to uh, satellite-based uh, uh, forest monitoring or uh, drone-related um, uh, uh, technology uh, and other uh, interesting examples. But there are a number of other uh, <clears throat> innovations, uh, including those uh, that could be applied are used by local communities and all. Uh, that uh, publication will be coming uh, very soon. Uh, I request all of you to kindly go through and uh, uh, try to promote that uh, as much as possible uh, among your uh, network, um, networks and other uh, channels. So as far as the uh, next uh, uh, steps are, how do we move forward? Uh, it is important to uh, enhance the adoption and scaling up uh, as has been identified or noted by almost uh, every one of you. Uh, I saw the polls uh, were very interesting and very uh, inspiring uh, to note and identify the kind of future actions needed. Uh, two things uh, particularly come up uh, are uh, uh, very striking as far as uh, I understood. One is uh, funding. Uh, definitely, I mean, many colleagues have uh, uh, not, uh, I mean, noted or highlighted the importance of, oh, youth, uh, the, there could be a special provision for youth that, that has been spe specifically noted, uh, whether it is GCF funding or JEF funding or bilateral. Uh, on behalf of FEO, uh, we'll uh, make sure that that kind of provision uh, is uh, made when uh, such uh, funding is uh, uh, materialized. Uh, second one is uh, partnerships. Uh, uh, thanks a lot to our DG uh, who has highlighted uh, the role of uh, various member countries uh, uh, in the region that could take up uh, this initiative. So this partnership uh, is very, very important uh, in that uh, context. Uh, Thanks to our uh, colleagues, our existing partners, uh, C4, AFOCO, uh, uh, and other uh, uh, 
uh, important organizations that are key to uh, help us promote, including various uh, uh, universities and research organizations that, uh, that came up very prominently in today's uh, discussion, the role of uh, universities and technology, I mean, uh, research institutions, how best they uh, can integrate, they can enhance, they can uh, uh, scale up uh, the adaptation, adoption of uh, these technologies, including the, uh, <clears throat> the need for uh, revising curricula uh, as and when, uh, as and where necessary. So, um, as far as FEO is concerned, we are with you. We try to provide uh, uh, the kind of regional platform uh, to promote this uh, as we move forward. Um, uh, we engage with uh, all the countries in the region uh, uh, after this uh, on a kind of individual uh, basis, a country, kind of country by country basis. And uh, in that context, this uh, roadmap uh, is going to form a, an important tool or a methodology uh, it has given uh, excellent uh, ideas or, uh, or uh, uh, action points on how to move forward. So uh, we look forward to uh, promoting roadmap and uh, engaging with uh, all of you uh, on an individual basis, as well as uh, in the form of a regional platform or a regional partnership basis. Thanks uh, once again. Thanks a lot to C4 colleagues, particularly all those uh, uh, people and uh, uh, mechanisms behind uh, organizing this uh, exciting event. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Raul. So I, I'll, I'll, conclude, I'll conclude briefly because we've, we've gone over, over the, the time, but just first to, to thank really uh, warmly all the, uh, the speakers, the presenters, uh, the, the, the moderators, the, the, the panelists, and, and above all the audience, including the students, your students, <laughs> some of your students, I think that, that was uh, uh, very lively. It certainly shows we are, when we, research organization are looking at new uh, work we're probably not doing enough looking at the potential there is to to work with youth in fact speaking under the control of Raul, we we we, we in fact modified <laughs> a lot of the way we envisage these studies and these roadmaps these roadmaps to to even more include the use than it was originally foreseen this is why we did an extra publication which which in fact we we, we presented today and this is also why in the other roadmap that is on primary forest conservation, that is also one big motivation for the young people to engage in, in forest and forestry to preserve the, the ecosystems. We really wanted not to use an old team of GIS experts, etc. But in fact, we, we took a little bit more time to, to, to start it, but we built uh, with uh, my, my colleague Yves Lomonier from C4. Uh, we, we, we worked with a young um team of young scientists um doing their masters etc so there are four or five of them that were involved in doing all the maps the gis and so so and that was really also in the doing an important part uh, of of the exercise so we really should do more of that we're not doing enough and i think it brings lessons for 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 all of our institutions in the in the future um, I think that we need also to connect and to anticipate the curricula and, and so, the, so that all this architecture is not just following the demand, but more anticipating, more reactive, and perhaps putting the use um, more in the driving seat of, of what they really need to have the, the keys for, for working in the future. Um, I think that's important when we look at the role of universities. This is something that in the FTA program, looking forward, we're going to launch a, a new partnership tonight. Uh, there's been 10 years of a collaborative research program in FTA, and there will be a new, uh, a new phase, a new partnership. AFOCO uh, is, is joining this, this, this initiative. We're going to look at how we work more closely with universities, how we connect international organizations, ONG with universities and so on with universities and, and with uh, the, the, the youth in a way in the broader sense uh, st students, but also a uh, younger population. I think we, we, what it shows, what this meeting shows is that uh, if, we, if we continue doing like perhaps in some of the other meetings, we're going to go in one way. If we, if we, if we try to find new ways to involve, maybe we're in the right, <laughs> the right path, the right direction, and we should just should, should do more of this. 
uh, in the future. So I really thank everybody and especially all the youth uh, involved for all their time and their, 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 I would need to say it also, their voluntary work uh, in this exercise. Thank you so much.